With me now is the journalist that broke the news on Devin Archer's testimony, New York Post columnist Miranda Devine. It's good to see you, Miranda. You too, Guy. All right, so is this actually going to happen on Monday? Because my understanding is these conversations, these uh, interviews, and the expected testimony has been deferred on multiple occasions. Will we finally hear from Mr. Archer next week? Yes, look, I believe so. Um, I know that they, there was a lot of toing and froing and dates put up over the last two weeks, and they never really settled on one day, but they did settle on this Monday, July 31st, and so I believe that's going ahead. And I don't think Devin Archer wants to put it off again because, uh, you know, he's suffering from death threats and has had to leave his home, and uh, it's all very awkward for him. So I think that. Um, you know, chances are he's just going to want to get it over and done with. And of course, Congress goes into their August recess shortly. So uh, I think on both sides, there's a desire to get it out of the way. And, uh, you know, as I previewed on Monday, um, what Devin Archer is expected to tell uh, Congress and the Oversight Committee is pretty uh, damaging to Joe Biden because it just blows up his entire story about knowing nothing about his son Hunter's, Hunter's overseas business dealings. Um, and uh, here we've got Devin Archer saying that, well, Joe Biden was dialed in by Hunter on speakerphone on up to two dozen occasions to speak with his overseas business partners, uh, that Joe Biden came along to uh, two dinners at least at Cafe Milano in Georgetown, again to meet Hunter Biden's business partners again while he was vice president. So it's very difficult for Joe Biden to sort of continue to stonewall. I noticed that the White House has changed their form of words. Now yep. they're saying Joe Biden is not in business with his son. But, you know, that wasn't the question. That's really leapt forward a, a good deal. Totally. And we have the reporting from various sources about some of these in-person meetings. We have uh, the testimony and the public statements on the record from Tony Bobulinski, who is another man in this realm connected to this family and their business. And then Devin Archer, you used the word awkward. This is going to be awkward for him. Why is that? Explain his relationship to this family and why his level of knowledge is important here. Devin Archer was uh, Hunter Biden's best friend in business. They met at Yale and uh, they were in business together uh, and friendship together for many years throughout Joe Biden's vice presidency. And uh, they made a fair amount of money together. And then um, eventually uh, uh, Devin Archer came unstuck with um, their last joint venture, which was this company called Burnham, which ended up uh, dissolving into um, fraud convictions for numerous people involved, uh, other than Hunter Biden, even though Hunter Biden was listed, I think, as vice chairman and earned a couple of hundred thousand dollars. Hmm. Um, and Devin Archer lost millions of dollars on the deal. He's the one going to jail. And I think... Uh, you know, he would feel fairly bitter about that. I know friends around him say that he feels that he's just been abandoned by the Bidens, having been promised by Hunter that he was family, that he was blood, that he was a part of a great family, the Bidens, who would never abandon him. And uh, I think that's the opposite that has happened to Devon Archer. So but he's got nothing family, to lose, really. Yeah. I was going to say that family, the Biden family, it's hard to exactly track how much money flowed into their various accounts and coffers. A lot of it was disguised through shell corporations and very complex transactions over the course of many years. Nancy Mace, who's a Republican congresswoman from South Carolina, she ballparked at least one figure. Here's what she said. Listen. Based on the evidence I've seen so far, I think the number is going to be north of $50 million that we're talking about here. This will go down as one of the most politically corrupt presidents and families in U.S. history. And we've got to show and prove it to the American people. We've got to show them everything that we have. So, Miranda, we know that the Oversight Committee has presented some evidence, like bank records of this. What, nine different members of the family getting payments? And it's totally unclear in many cases why they were paid, what the services rendered were, at the very least, you would think this should get the attention and sort of raise the curiosity of people beyond conservatives and Republicans. 
Well, uh, absolutely. And look, we have the testimony from two IRS whistleblowers who were the two uh, investigators looking into Hunter Biden for five years. Uh, they, they trawled over his documents and bank statements and they had subpoena power and so on uh, from 2014 to 2019. And what they found was 17 million, a little bit more, um, that flowed through and of to, to various family members and associates uh, from China and Russia and Romania and so on, uh, Kazakhstan. And um, from that, they counted 8.3 million uh, to Hunter. Now, there may be other money that we don't know about, and there may have been earlier money, but um, certainly, you know, does it really matter if it's, uh, you know, $10,000 or $50 million? It's still money that... Uh, came through in very um, suspicious circumstances and, you know, which revolved around Joe Biden, the then vice president, the power and influence that he wielded in the countries that were coughing up all this money. So that's where it becomes relevant today to the fact that you have a president sitting in the Oval Office who may be compromised uh, in the eyes of those countries uh, that spent all that money on his various family members. Well, and Miranda, you just start to tally up the lies, the misstatements, the false denials from Joe Biden himself. The laptop was Russian disinformation. I had no knowledge of any of yeah. this business stuff with my son or my brother or anyone else. Uh, my son made no money in China. We'll deal with that later in the show. Yes. These things are demonstrably false. And you would say where there's a lot of growing smoke, there might be some fire. And following it all is Miranda Devine. Miranda, thank you. Thanks so much, Guy.